What's going on guys, this is Kazi. In this video, I'm gonna be grading the same footage on my $30,000 reference monitor, as well as my $300 entry level grading monitor. And I want you to be the judge. Let me know which footage do you prefer. And if you wanna practice along, footage is included, just check out the link in the description. Now paying $30,000 for a monitor in this day and age just sounds insane. So I wanna give you three examples that might change your mind. Check this out. Before and after. Before and after. Looks that used to take me hours to create can be done in minutes using Kazi's toolkit and the results are far superior and much more consistent for shot matching. And best of all, it comes with a free masterclass to help you get the most out of your tool. Click to secure your spot to get early access plus 10% off when Kazi's toolkit becomes available. All right, so instead of doing my own tests, I just decided to go to the source. Vincent by HDTV Tests puts out some of the biggest bangers when it comes to anything related to displays. I'm gonna have a link to his channel and plus the two videos that I'm gonna be referencing in the next few minutes. Moving on, what do we see on the screen? To the left, we have HX310. To the right, we have GZ950. So when I said true HDR, you're probably thinking, dude, all my devices do HDR nowadays. What do you mean? This is what I mean. Why does it look so blue on the right side on our OLED compared to our HX310? The answer is twofold. One, ABL, auto brightness limiter. So anytime when something gets too bright, it brings the brightness down to like level it out. And the second main reason, especially with OLEDs, is that they cannot sustain really high nits still to this day. This video came out four years ago, okay? So if anybody is gonna call me out in the comments and probably like, hey, technology has changed a lot. Let's just look at this example right here. So I'm gonna go to our things. This is considered their best HDR OLED TV right now. So we have peak brightness at 221 nits and we have sustained brightness at 215 nits. The only time it's gonna hit over 1000 is gonna be 10% window coverage. Unlike BVM, that can do 1000 nits full screen edge to edge because it's using a completely different medium. It's using an LCD technology, dual layer LCD technology. Sometimes I just hook up my Apple TV to it. My God, Blade Runner on this thing, the new Batman on this thing, the experience is out of this world. Number two, mastering monitor. So this content that we're looking at, you see how the sun is blown out? because this movie was mastered on 4,000 nit monitor and HX310 can only go up to 1,000 nits. So this is beyond 1,000 nits and it's clipping. This is a no-go for this monitor. So now you might say, well, that's not a good thing because my $300 monitor does a better job. Great, for consuming, it's not bad. It's actually pretty good. But for creating, you don't wanna go in with a baked in tone mapping because now you're creating an image that will look completely different from device to device. And that's why we throw around terms like reference monitor or true colors and stuff like that because what it really means is that there is no tone mapping applied and when I dial things in a certain way and everything looks good here, it's going to look as good as it can be from display to display. Moving on to number three, infinite contrast. So let's look at this example right here. We got the XDR Pro Display. Let's just put these side by side. Uh, resolution 6K compared to 4K, 1600 nits maximum brightness compared to 1000 nits. Wow, both have 10 bit color and both have the same contrast ratio, one million to one contrast ratio, dual layer technology in both systems, but completely different. HX310 is using a proprietary technology where there is an additional monochrome LCD sandwiched between the two main LCDs. And the only job that that LCD has is to turn the brightness on and off of each individual pixel and that's what gives you the inky blacks. Compared to, let's check this out. Now we're looking at the Apple XDR display and you see like the blooming effect that's happening right around the edges. Apple XDR display, you have about 576 local dimming zones compared to HX310 because that monochrome LCD is just doing all the work. Now on paper, you have one million to one contrast ratio on both but look at the difference just because of the active local dimming on your Apple XDR display and no local dimming on your HX310. And guys, this is why I always keep going back and forth between 
you can't just look at the benchmarks. You can't just look at the specs. You really have to touch and feel things. Justifying the cost for this monitor in 2024 is so difficult until you see these sort of comparisons. So now imagine you're grading your stuff on the XDR display. Do you think you can use it for mastering your content? Marketing material out there is so misleading. When you're working on really high stakes stuff, you just don't want to be dealing with this, living your life by crossing your fingers as a colorist. You just saw three examples why Sony can justify charging this much money. It gives you color accuracy. It gives you reliability. I mean, this thing is built like a tank. Customer service is second to none. You are ready to go for SDR content, HDR content, DCI-P3, and Dolby Vision, all in one package. On the other hand, when we look at the ProArt display, we have a smaller monitor, so it's not 32, it's a 27 inch IPS based monitor. It's a 1440p monitor instead of a 4K monitor. And then you have 350 nits tops, so it's an SDR monitor. And the thing that hurts it the most is this right here thousand to one contrast ratio. And it's an eight bit monitor, it's not a 10 bit monitor, which is a big, big deal breaker when it comes to color grading. The thing that hurts these consumer level monitors, even if they're claimed to be calibrated and grading monitors, is that they come in set to a standard setting. This image right here is a lot brighter than what a Rec. 709 Gamma 2.2 or 2.4 would look like on this screen. Keeping those things in mind, I'm gonna leave both of these systems on their factory default settings and I'm gonna grade shots individually on that. And then at the end, if you want to use this monitor as a starter kit, I'm gonna show you which settings you should choose to get the best results. Now the silver lining, if you were to decide to go with this monitor instead of that monitor, that you will be saving $29,700, for which you can easily get the most souped up, maxed out gaming PC, a Rolex, and a brand new car while still keeping some money in your pocket. All right, so time to get into the grading challenge and here are the rules. I will not be using scopes. I wanna see how well they handle their contrast, exposure, skin tones, stuff like that. Two, I will be using ambient lighting. I'm gonna kill these lights. I'm gonna leave that one on and think of it as like a window light. That's also gonna determine how well each screen handles light. Third, we're gonna pick a pretty challenging shot. So the shot that I ended up picking has a lot going on. I wanna make the shirt to be white and then I wanna make sure her skin is dialed in. I wanna add a bunch of contrast. I wanna make sure my shadows are neutral and I wanna make sure my highlights are clean and neutral as well. All right, if you're confused about the sudden wardrobe change, it's because I lost tons of footage last night. So I have to redo this entire section. Welcome to a life of a YouTuber. We're gonna pick up where we left off. Here is my very simple no tree inside Resolve. So my IDT, this footage is shot on FX6. It's being converted from S-Log3 to DaVinci White Gamut. DWG is my favorite working color space inside Resolve. And then our output device transform is DaVinci White Gamut to 709. So this is log, this is 709 from S-Log3, good. This is the extent of looking at this monitor. Now I'm gonna put my focus right here. The first thing that I'm gonna do is let's go in our HDR palette offset and I wanna pull the overall image down just a touch, okay? So I wanna just like kind of set this as my base exposure. So we just dropped it about 0.2, almost like quarter of a stop. Now I wanna go under my look and I'm just quickly gonna use my custom curve. So that's just gonna give us a little bit more control but I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm just gonna do this and I'm gonna pull this down. Like we're just going for like a Rec. 709 look with a little bit of pop. So even something like that. And you wanna give your image some contrast first before you do balance because that it really starts to tell you the story, right? So this is before, this is after. Like now we can clearly start to see there's a lot of blue in the shirt that we wanna take out. So we're gonna start off with our printer lights. What I wanna do, just keep an eye in the offset area right here. So let's just take out one blue. Let's take out two blue. Two blue is too much. Well, two blue is actually not bad, but now what I wanna do is I wanna go half printer lights and let's subtract half yellow. And as soon as I do that, I'm starting to look really, really good. The skin tones are looking really nice. The shirt is looking a billion times better. What else can I do? Can I add one cyan? No, I can't. If anything, when I subtract cyan, I really like what happens to her skin tone. I absolutely love it. The white is looking really good. The background is looking good. It's not looking stylized. It's looking 
like a very good version of Rec 709, like a healthy contrast, a healthy pop, and everything is balanced. This is too blue now. This is balanced. So I'm liking that. What happens if I add red? That's too much. I don't like it. What happens if I kill one yellow? I don't mind it. Let's go quarter printer lights. And what if we just like add a hint of magenta? I don't know. I don't like what it does to my whites. So like I'm gonna split the difference. So keeping my whites clean and, and the background not dramatically cyan, I think this is a good spot where we are. And if I were to take these three and if I do on and off, you see like how fast I got there and everything is looking good. So we're gonna go ahead and save this. And now I'm looking at this monitor. Obviously this is not gonna do an accurate representation, but I can tell you the difference is night and day. This just looks already like Rec 709 pushed high key ready to go compared to what this looked like. And once again, you might think that this looks amazing because the monitor comes in equipped with standard settings. So it has wider color gamut and then it has its brightness turned all the way up. Think of it as like when you get a brand new TV and it's set to vivid settings instead of like cinematic or filmmaker mode. So that's what's happening on this monitor. For consuming, amazing. For grading, let's see what it does. This is really going to give us an idea. So let's start with our exposure. This is way too bright. So I just wanna pull this down and get it in the ballpark and um, liking what I'm seeing here. I'm gonna keep it somewhere around there. That's good. And I'm going to build a pretty aggressive contrast. Like I said, we're just going for a Rec 709 type vibe. Okay. Now, another thing that I can tell you just by looking at this, this information is already gone, but more importantly, because of the low contrast, I just cannot make out anything here. Whereas here, no matter how much I pushed it, I just can break apart like each tonal range, like just by looking at it. Whereas here, I'm just losing this. It just becomes like a mush. That's just the way low contrast monitors handle things, right? So it's looking pretty juicy. I'm not gonna lie, but yes, there is still blue. I do see that. So we're gonna use similar techniques. I'm gonna go in my printer lights. I wanna pull out blue. So always go too far and then come back. So this is looking pretty good, but still there's way too much magenta here. So let's subtract one magenta. That's too far. So let's go half printer lights and then take out magenta. Then I wanna add yellow. That's too much. This is better. And uh, what happens if we subtract half cyan? It's looking pretty good because I like the skin tones. I don't like the, the shoulder. It has way too much blue. So let's pull half blue and Right now, I think the skin and the background is leaning too much toward green and then the shirt is looking good. So again, very interesting, right? Like how the colors were seen on this screen, whereas here it's just like they're kind of skewed. At least that's what it feels like. So now what I have to do is I kind of have to get granular. I have to get into lift gamma gain to dial everything in. So what happens if I grab my gamma and just try to pull some of that excess green that we're seeing? So this is looking a lot better. Now, I don't like how blue this area gets and magenta. So I wanna pull that out. I'm gonna take my gain and I'm gonna pull it up in this direction somewhere. But now this got so green. So I'm not liking that. And then I'm gonna take my gamma and I'm gonna do the same thing, but pull it down a little bit because it was just getting a little too red. I don't wanna, just go back and forth too much. So at one point, I'm just gonna call it. So I'm gonna take my gain and try to put a little bit of more neutral tones here. It's looking good. I feel like this doesn't look dramatically cyan. The skin tone still looks pretty good. The contrast is pretty juicy, at least on this screen. And then uh, we just got as much as we could. I'm still not super happy, but I think it's it's good enough. So I'm gonna park it right here. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at both of these images on a third monitor. Why? Because I don't want this to be a bias or this to be a bias. And CG279X ISO is a highly sought after calibrated monitor that comes with a hardware calibration. Amazing monitor, no complaints, love this thing. So I'm gonna look at this image first. Now that we brought it here, it looks pretty dark, don't you think? Like, I mean, it just, all the information feels like is gone. How does it actually compare to what we graded on our HX310? Look at the difference before and after. This is what we saw when we were working on it. 
and that's what we got. I'm living with this monitor for years. Now I just have so much faith and trust in this thing that I fly through my grades because I can just know guaranteed that it got me. But apparently I can't do that on this monitor. I mean, look at the results. Let's pull these next to each other. Our ProArt and our HX310. Like this is insane, right? So let's pull up the scope at this point so we can really, really see the color story. And if I go back and forth, look at the difference. Like this image that we graded on ProArt is about, I would say like a one to two stops underexposed. And it looks so bright and perfect here. We had to bring it down. But our HX310, again, looks exactly like what it looked like here. So clean. I mean, look at the scopes, my parade, how clean my highlights are. Like this is exactly what I was seeing and I was like spelling it out. Let's look at the skin tone. So I have the display qualifier turned on. So what if I grab the qualifier and I go here? Look at the skin tones, guys, come on. Like we just nailed it. It's perfect where it's supposed to be. Now let's talk about the colors. And uh, obviously we can see it here too. Like it's it's bottom heavy. Our pro art grade falls down a little bit. Whereas our HX310 is perfectly balanced. When you are right in the middle of your crosshair in the vector scope, that means your image is really, really well balanced. And look at this, the difference. Night and day, guys. So I wanted to give you guys this demo so you can see it for yourself how much it actually matters. Now, I want to show you this. Up until this point, we threw a lot of shade on this monitor. But I'm just going to change one setting, which is not rocket science. Go under menu and just go down to 709. I'm going to take my image and I'm going to put it on this screen. Open this and make it full screen. And you look at this image and you look at that image. The brightness is a lot closer. This one still looks a little bit warm, exactly like what we saw on this monitor, whereas this is showing me that it's like really well balanced. So the colors are just tiny bit off, like it's more on the magenta side compared to like a little bit more on the teal side. So like literally the tint is just kind of like off, but it's not enough like where it's a deal breaker. But in terms of the overall contrast, we have gotten really close. In terms of like the highlights, we've gotten really, really close. In terms of the shadows, we've gotten as good as it's going to get. All those things are ridiculously impressive. I'm just looking at different tonal ranges and I'm going, this is looking insane. So if you buy a monitor and if it is considered a grading monitor, meaning it is pre-calibrated, just make sure that when you receive it, go under your picture settings and put it on Rec. 709. Don't put it on sRGB because somehow the sRGB gamma is always off. Like it's too lifted usually for consumer monitors. And if you guys enjoyed this video, do me a favor, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel for more content like this. I'll see you in the next one.